Aloha and welcome to the Gemini New Moon Distant Reiki Share. And I'm so grateful for all who have gathered here together live and those who are listening later on the recordings know that you are held in the circle. And going with that, the recordings will be on my YouTube channel Usually later today, sometimes it might be a little later. It all depends on my schedule, internet connectivity, the Wi-Fi gods and goddesses, and these kinds of things. So you can always check there if you do need to leave early or you're not able to stay the whole time or able to come at all and be live. So as always, I'm offering one-on-one readings, a variety of different astrology readings, galactic astrology readings, and another type of reading that looks at stars the ancient Egyptian way. So if you're interested in learning more about my offerings, you can go to my website. And I also offer Reiki sessions, distant Reiki sessions, and remote Reiki sessions If you're looking for more healing and guidance, intuitive insights, that sort of thing. I also want to let you know that June 17th kicks off a free global event that I'm a part of. It's called You Are the Cosmos. And on screen, you can see the URL for that where you can go to this website and register for free. If you're interested, I am being featured as a speaker, as a part of this summit, and the topic is really fun too. I'm talking about discovering your soul origin, your gifts and talents with galactic astrology and Reiki. And as part of this conference, I offered a free gift. There are 20 other speakers that also offer free gifts, and the gift that I'm offering is a Reiki journey to the star Tau Ceti, which is a very important star of 2024. And it might be a really important star for you specifically, depending on your birth chart. But for all of us this year, it's a really, really important star. So I encourage you to take advantage of that if you're interested. On June 20th and 21st, I'm teaching Reiki 1 and 2 in Holy Fire 3 World Peace Reiki lineage. So if you've been thinking about taking a training in this lineage, maybe taking your first Reiki training, or you've been trained previously and you're wanting to experience the Holy Fire energy and system, then this training is for you. And next new moon is the Cancer new moon. And I will be holding this share on July 5th. At the time of this Reiki share, I haven't added that to my website yet, but I will be adding that shortly so you can register there. For more information about all of this, my website is taylornorrisreiki.com. So June transits, here they are. You may want to have a notebook or a calendar. You can mark down some of these dates if you want, take notes. And you can also screenshot this. This is a a nice kind of uh, layout of, of some of the information here. And it looks like a lot, but I will do my best to summarize it in a way that is concise, hopefully. So the major background energy of June is Saturn. Actually, Saturn is one of our social planets. It's the visible limit to our planetary system around the sun. And this planet is stationing to go retrograde on June 29th at 19 degrees, 25 minutes of Pisces. So when a planet goes retrograde, this is a time to internalize its function. And Saturn is about our relationship to authority and structure, physical manifestation, law and order, and really cultivating an inner authority rather than turning to external sources or what do I do? What do I think? What do I believe? What's my next step? But really 
focusing on that information and those insights and that guidance and that inner voice that knows all of that for you. So when Saturn is stationing retrograde, it's kind of like all this month, it's really drilling down on the these degrees in Pisces. So if you have planets or points around 19 degrees of Pisces, you'll be feeling this. And also if you have planets or points at 19 degrees of the mutable signs, so Gemini, Sagittarius, Virgo, you will also be feeling this in, in a way. This might create a sort of tension or shift in consciousness that needs to happen, a shift and a motivation in your action. You might be motivated to take action. There might just be kind of uh, some deep-seated healing that is coming up at this time that is of a karmic nature, might relate to other lifetimes, maybe ancestral, maybe much larger, infinite Pisces. And it really is an opportunity to be letting go so that that inner authority has more space to really communicate its truth and your truth and express through you. So Saturn is strong and this Gemini new moon is also in square to Saturn. So we're all feeling that energy like yesterday, June 6th, today, and it actually carries on because as the other planets transit Gemini, as Venus transits Gemini, and then Mercury is also transiting in the zodiac sign of Gemini, they are both squaring Saturn as well. The sun is squaring Saturn. So really it was Venus leading Venus squaring Saturn, the sun squaring Saturn with the moon, and then also Mercury squaring Saturn. So we're we're all feeling this. And it's also that that background of the stationing retrograde at the end of this month. So that is very much there. And this is also a bit stabilizing for the Gemini energy. This can be a helpful influence to lean into because Gemini can be all over the place and a bit overwhelmed. And Saturn can br bring a deeper sense of consolidation and kind of bringing it together. So this can that can be a higher expression of this energy. Also helpful for all of this Gemini, we do have a strong Gemini emphasis until June 16th when Venus and Mercury are going to enter Cancer. Mars enters Taurus on June 8th. So Mars has been racing through Aries and maybe driving us to take many actions and work very hard and get started on a lot of things and really be action focused, doing focused. And our bodies and our beings may be a bit exhausted from everything that we have been up to. Mars and Taurus is going to slow everything down. Mars and Aries is a lot faster of an energy, speedier of an energy. Gemini is very mentally speedy with all the planets we've had in Gemini. Mars entering Taurus is, is like, okay, let's ground. Let's slow down. Take a deep breath, slow and steady. Enjoy the process also of the actions we're taking. This is wonderful for feeling a deeper sense of embodiment and connection to the earth and really taking your time with any of the projects and fresh starts that you may be focusing on at this time. So super helpful and definitely a noticeable shift from what we were dealing with with Mars and Aries. I mentioned the sun squaring Saturn. Of course, the new moon was square to Saturn. So we had the moon squaring Saturn yesterday, the sun squaring Saturn exactly on June 9th. And this is more of that inner authority energy that's coming in. This can be self-discipline. This can also be focus, 
leaning into healthy structure, healthy planning. This can also be like a necessary pause and reflection to reflecting on your commitments, your responsibilities, and saying yes to those that are important and saying no to those that are not aligned. On June 11th, Mars squares Pluto. And this is one of the day's hard aspects between Mars and Pluto. Wonderful day to be in that peace frequency, like turn it on extra high, extra full blast and radiate that for yourself, for your life and for the earth as well for all of humanity, because this can be a, a more volatile energy at a lower expression or a shadow expression. So calling all light workers to really anchor that peace vibration at this time. This can also be a good time for very deeply aligned soul action, soul motivated actions, getting the personal will and the personality really aligned with the directive of your soul, Pluto. And then these two tables here are talking about something I notice in looking at all the transits, which is that Venus has been and will continue to be leading through Gemini and into Cancer. And Mercury has been a couple steps behind and Mercury is a faster moving planet and will catch up with Venus. So Venus recently joined the sun on June 2nd, and this was like a total like reformulation of our divine feminine energies and really a renewal of our self-worth, our value, our creative connection, our flow, sense of abundance, sense of being in relationship, beauty, harmony, the higher frequencies of Venus really being reintegrated, reconstructed, deconstructed, and kind of put back together here for a new cycle. Venus will not join the sun again until March of next year, and it will be in the sign of Aries that that conjunction, that Kazemi, it's called when a planet meets the sun, will be taking place. Mercury, likewise, will also be meeting the sun soon on June 16th. And so Mercury's been following Venus in her, in this dance, really until June 17th. When Mercury meets the sun, it's a similar moment of a mental purification process, a mental process of renewal, reformulation, and starting again, starting afresh, and really reprogramming the mind to be in greater touch with the deeper sense of value, Venus. With Venus leading, it's like our divine feminine, like our attraction principle has been leading, has recently gone through this purification process, Mercury following, our mind's kind of like a step behind playing catch up. And now with Mercury actually going through that same process, going through that same healing and transformation, letting go, bringing in, it's like then our minds can be on the same page in alignment, in resonance with that renewed sense of value and worth and more of that healed divine feminine expression. So things might get a little easier in some ways after that, like the mind is on track with that rather than being stuck in kind of its old programs that need to be let go and refreshed at this time. And it's beautiful because they actually Mercury meets up with Venus in the sign of cancer. They both enter cancer on June 16th, Venus first, Mercury 
a few hours later. And then June 17th, we have Mercury conjunct Venus. And that's where more of that unification of our mind with the divine feminine, with that creativity, worth, beauty, love, inherent value, the value of our beingness, of home, of family, of our or the depths of our psyche really being integrated in that that sense of inherent value and worthiness. So towards the end of the month or, you know, getting close to the end of the month, mid-month, end of the month, we have this big shift from Gemini to Cancer. And that's really coming in strong, of course, when the sun enters Cancer on June 20th for this year. And this, of course, is marking the summer solstice in the northern hemisphere or the winter solstice in the southern hemisphere. And so this screen is showing the charts of the Cancer solstice. So and the inner chart here is just the more traditional Western astrology chart of the moment that the sun here is entering the sign of cancer. And you can see here, the, the planets are all here, the aspect lines drawn between them, the signs on that outer ring, the degrees on the outermost part. And then you can see here, the star alignments to some of the planets and some of the points. And this information, the star alignments, are, is also present in this table. This is showing us that basically the first thing that comes to mind when I see this galactic chart, it's like this is a galactic rainbow. You know, this is really beautiful. Our star family is very present with us as we welcome in solstice and cancer solstice in particular it's always that zero degree cancer point. And we have some really fabulous stars at that point. So every cancer solstice, we're getting this infusion of the Polaris star frequency, our whole star, our North star. So it's a moment to like redirect and be guided to Whatever your true north is, your higher self, your authentic self, your more of that soul consciousness, over soul, divine self, spirit self, that can really come in here. There's also this influx of success consciousness with Betelgeuse star in Orion constellation. This is a star where success just comes easily. It just is, it flows, it's there, it's natural, it's healthy. So this can be a powerful moment to contemplate what does success mean to you in your authentic voice, your inner truth? What does that mean for you? And to even think about the intentions you want to set for the next three months as it will be cancer solstice and the next big change being the autumn equinox or the Libra equinox will be our next big change. So really wonderful time to reflect on that. Also very interesting. So the sun, like I said, is entering cancer, you know, just behind Venus and Mercury here. This is a great time to connect with the water. Also, Mercury is alignment with Sirius B star, which is very connected to the Sirius star being Sirius star system. And this star in particular is connected to the waters, is connected to sound healing, could be a really great use of the solstice energy being by the water, swimming in the water, you know, even if it's your bathtub, any body of water can be really healing and working with sound in any way that feels good to you. A lot of deep healing can come 
through that and particularly with regard to healing the challenges of childhood, cancer, as well as integrating and balancing more of our divine feminine, divine masculine energy. So you can see here, Mars is making a sextile to Mercury, Mercury's in sextile to Mars, and Mars is aligned with these beautiful stars, Shadir star and Cassiopeia constellation. So Mars has to do with our divine masculine function. The star Shadir in Cassiopeia constellation has to do with our divine feminine energy, our queenliness. Cassiopeia constellation is the queen in the sky. She's the divine feminine leader, the pure archetype of the queen. And so there can be more of a balancing here that comes through as Mars meets up with this star, making that harmonious flow of energy, this sextile with Mercury that's actually going to perfect as Mercury moves on a little bit after the solstice. What's also notable here is that this solstice occurs and then we actually have the full moon the day after. I'll do a separate video about the full moon. So really, really extra powerful, potent cancer solstice. Also interesting, there's like so many interesting avenues for looking at this chart. Jupiter conjunct the stars of the Hyades here is, is connected to the rainmaker in abundance. And this can bring literal rain. And I know we're seeing that also with Neptune at the last degree of Pisces flooding in certain areas and like too much water. But thinking about this also metaphorically is connecting to letting go and grief and, and those processes that many of us are experiencing and needing to allow to flow through, but also bringing in the rain, bringing in the nourishment, bringing in the flow, bringing in the abundance, water, life, God consciousness, the intelligence of the water, the magic of the water, the deep sense of emotional connection, the connection to mysticism and the waters of all the worlds and all the planets and all the star beings and all the universe contained within the waters as well. The moon here at the time of the solstice is conjunct the great attractor. And you can see just prior to the cancer solstice, it would have been exactly opposite Jupiter. And then as the solstice moment is exact, it lines up with the great attractor and the great attractor is this cosmic anomaly, this deep space object that is the source of our local universe, is the source of our home supercluster of galaxies, which is called Laniakea. In Hawaiian, this means immense, immeasurable heaven. So we live in a super cluster that's called that. I mean, we named it that, but but still, I mean, how how beautiful to know that and to to feel that that really flowing through the solstice with the great attractor too. I mean, it's in the name attractor. It does have this powerful attraction force and seeing that it's opposite Jupiter. Jupiter and Jupiter cycle will actually exactly oppose the great attractor later on this year. So we really have this opportunity to bring in that worthiness, that abundance, that flow, cosmic intelligence. This is also about truth, about information, insights, downloads, communications, very far-reaching communications with spirit guides and star beings, extraterrestrials, those kinds of things, galactic contact. But this is also communication and information and truth 
being expressed human to human and being conduits for that intelligence and that truth to flow through each of our unique vessels. One other thing I'll mention is that Uranus has been conjunct the star Al Ghul and is approaching closer and closer alignment with Al Ghul. Al Ghul is another marker of the divine feminine. And this to me, I was realizing part of why the Lemuria energy has been coming up so much is I think in part due to this particular alignment. It's literally Uranus awakening within us these memories of how we can live on earth in more of that divine feminine integration and embodiment and balance, healing the traumas of having that taken away either on earth and or other planets, other civilizations, other cultures, healing some of those, those memories, those cellular memories of when that kind of changed over and shifted to a whole other paradigm that, you know, we're repairing and we're kind of living through an, a whole other transition of finding a balanced way to live amongst human beings, the animals, the plants all life on earth in a harmonious and respectful way where we can all thrive. And so this alignment feels like a healing of those traumas and also a revealing more of the possibilities of greater harmony, greater peace, greater integration of that divine feminine on the earth and many of the Lemurian type energies and consciousness awakening within us as we heal and detoxify more of the trauma signatures that have been held so deeply unconscious and suppressed and repressed and may have been much less accessible to many of us. Those, those keys, those codes, those parts of our DNA waking up now at this time being supported actually by Uranus, asking us to radically change and transform and welcome in new paradigms and wake up more of that light that's present in each of us. So I will stop it there or else I'll be talking for a really long time <laughs> because I want to move into our Reiki journey shortly. So that's a bit about the astrology of what's to come. Like I said, I'll do a separate video on the full moon and looking forward to that as well. <laughs>